The International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin for war crimes in Ukraine. This comes more than a year after his invasion of Ukraine. Joining me now to discuss is Ambassador Kurt Volker, former U.S. Ambassador to NATO and former U.S. Special Representative for Ukraine negotiations. Sir, thank you so much for joining us, especially as this breaking news is just coming in. No, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, for starters, your reaction to this breaking news and its significance? Well, first off, I'm a little bit surprised that it came so quickly. Um, we all anticipated that there would be investigations and uh, indictments uh, for war crimes uh, for Russian forces. I thought that they would probably work their way up the chain, uh, going with those where they had direct evidence of people committing war crimes and eventually leading to Putin at the top of the chain of command. But going directly to Putin this way, it's a recognition that the crime of aggression is uh, a crime in itself and one that Russia is responsible for under his leadership and that the war crimes committed by Russian forces in Ukraine all took place at his direction. So this is significant. Doesn't mean he's going to be arrested anytime soon, but it just makes very clear that there are international laws and standards and Vladimir Putin is responsible for violating those. Okay, and correct me if I'm wrong, so does it mean that there's just now enough evidence against him in order to issue this arrest warrant? Because I think a lot of people watching this who don't know how the International Criminal Court works are saying, well, why now? What took so long? Yeah, well, that's just it. You, you have to uh, accumulate evidence to justify an arrest warrant. And in this case, you have a lot of evidence. You know, we've all seen the pictures of the people executed in Bucha, for example, uh, the bombing of the uh, children's hospital, mm -hmm. uh, the bombing of the maternity clinic. Uh, so we all saw those things. But establishing that these are all directly taking place at the direction of President Putin of Russia, uh, that takes a little time to put together. And I think they wanted to make sure they had an ironclad case before they launched. Yeah. Um, OK, we're going to stay on top of this one. Um, I want to pivot now to China's president, uh, Xi, slating to, slated to go to Moscow on Monday. Do you think news of this um, arrest warrant might change that? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think China is going to go forward with the visit. Uh, as we've seen, China has not provided robust support to Ukraine during the course of this conflict. A lot of people were worried that they would provide arms and munitions to Russia. They have not done so. Uh, and so what China has most recently done is put out a peace plan where they call for respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of independent states. And that would imply Russia having to get out. But what China did with Saudi Arabia and Iran was position itself in between, try to act as a broker and put together a peace plan. I think they want to position themselves the same way with respect to Ukraine. They see Russia in there launching this aggression. They see the U.S. and other Western countries supporting Ukraine. They, they therefore view that as an opening for their own diplomacy to try to play a role and uh, put themselves in a leadership position in the eyes of the world, and particularly the global south. And I know you don't have a, a crystal ball, but what other predictions do you have on what might come from their meeting next week? And is there any way that that this could prolong the war in Ukraine? I don't think there's any way to prolong the war other than failing to give Ukraine the aid it needs. Because Putin is determined to keep attacking and keep trying to take territory. And he's going to do this as long as he has a military that can fight. So what we have to do is give the arms to Ukraine, everything that they need as quickly as possible to help them defeat the Russian military in Ukraine, restore their borders. And that is the thing that will end the war. China's effort here is to see whether they can convince Putin to end it sooner through some form of negotiation or concessions. But I'm very confident that Putin will not do that. Beijing previously accused the United States and NATO of provoking Russia. Um, is the recent downing of a U.S. drone by a Russian fighter jet an example of that or no? No, no, no. So this is a very important point. Uh, the U.S. drone was flying in international airspace over international waters, uh, something that U.S. military forces do all over the world, in Southeast Asia, in the Atlantic, uh, the Pacific, and here in the Black Sea, flying in international airspace. And Russian um, aircraft deliberately attacked that drone and eventually brought it down. Um, that is an unprovoked act of aggression against U.S. military forces in international waters. Uh, this is something that is not a provocation by the United States, but unacceptable behavior on the part of Russia. Mm -hmm.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.